<laughs> wow. Hello, love. We are coming to you. Leah Ackerman and I are connecting with you today and sharing some love with you about living how Leah is living her chosen path and feeling all the feels. Um, so welcome, Leah. Thanks. For Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is yeah. a big honor. I love watching this little series. So it's <laughs> an honor to be on it. <laughs> yes. Well, my goal... Um, I just want to say how appreciative I am that you are willing to open up and share your experience of working with me and also your own process and stuff with women that may or may not know you. And so if, if, if Leah is new to your world, please feel free to connect with her, get to know her. She is so open and honest and straight into the point. And that's what I absolutely love about her. Um, but I just want to say thank you, Leah, because, um, I, my goal is for people to see that living your chosen path isn't just this easy peasy lemon squeezy, mm -hmm. but also there's a realness to it and it it's helpful and real people are doing it. It's not just me filling you full of crap. Like there is a chosen path and um, there's many different forms of how to live that and how to carry that out. So let's, Let's begin. Do you want to add anything to that? Well, I was just going to say that, you know, for me, even if you asked me to participate in this a few months ago, I probably would have been a little leery about it just because that's where I was in my spiritual journey. And I see this as sort of just like a next step of sort of fully stepping into it, which is things that we have talked about um, as we've worked together, you know, now with what it's been at least a year, if not a little longer. Um, and so I sort of see this sort of as the next step in the, the spiritual journey for me. So yeah, spirit was like, oh yeah, when I got asked. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a no, that's for sure. <laughs> awesome. My goal is for at least 100 people to be living their chosen path by the end of 2020 um, or before. And I want that positive energy ripple effect right? Um, just going and going and going. Yeah. And so my intention with, with these these interviews is for others then to feel like their chosen path is attainable and there are people who are actually living their chosen path and who are who are relatable so well for what it's um, worth i don't know uh, like how wide you cast your net what you're counting 100 but like you know i do as part of my business a lot of business mentoring and so i'm finding more people are coming to me that are in alignment with like what they're they're finding what they want to do and so we added like 11 people to our team in the first week of june so we want to like check off some little notches for that as credit then by all means because i'm definitely sharing information that we have chatted about but also just the tools that i either had within me and i didn't understand in our your programs have helped me to understand and now i'm relaying that information kind of ripple effect. So yes. Yay. Awesome. I know I saw that post for you and I was like, or th that you made yeah. that's so super excited because that was one of your things that like when we were working together, I was like, I would really like to grow my team, but I don't know. And then you like became clear on who you want to be right. coming in. So, Ooh, so. And, and you can see it. And it's probably like when you start working with people where and being an empath and intuitive too, it's it's like you see it inside them. And then they start to divert and you're like, whoa, 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 let's get it back. Let's get it focused, like reel her in. Um, and I see that. And I just feel like these little baby, little spiritual babies coming under my wing. And we're talking business and whatnot, but I've been tying in the spiritual side of that. So, um, and, you know, that's where the the magic is. For mm -hmm. It's not magic, but it is. It feels like magic anyway. Mm -hmm. Why? So I... There's a point of me asking you to do this. Yeah. Why why are you tying in spiritual to to your business? I think for so long I kept them so separate because I was concerned about um, you know, folks are coming to me. And for those that don't know what I do professionally, I'm a sexual health and wellness advocate. So like people are coming to me um asking for um, you know, expertise on these really personal issues. And so while oftentimes, I would say 99% of the time, I'm using what I call my spidey sense, where I'm receiving information about, um, you know, how they're feeling, because I, that's, that's my chosen path. And what spirit has gifted to me is the ability to 
basically I feel what other people are feeling. Um, and it's been a long process of like being able to identify that that's what's going on um, within me. But anyways, they come to me with seemingly black and white questions. So it felt wrong or misleading for me to then start to interject what I call the woo woo on people without their permission. And from your process, you know, saying yes and consenting to that is a big part of being open to receiving that information anyway. So I felt like I didn't want to shove it down anyone's throat or offend somebody or make them uncomfortable or whatever. And what I'm just finding is that the more separated I kept them, the more uncomfortable my own business and life in general was. So the more I can bring them together, the the better. And and I've just found little ways to bring it in unapologetically. <laughs> that just kind of says, you know, if you're going to work with me, you just have to understand that that's part of it. And it might not be your thing. And that's OK. Um, and if it really bothers you that much, then like there's other people you can work with, too. And bless and release. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you want to know your chosen path? I well, was and side note before you answer that, mm -hmm. I have to say we we started working together one on one and then go and then you went into the group of chosen path. So when we first started working yeah. together, I didn't like jump right in and channel your chosen path. But no, no, not at all. And yeah. I didn't know what like honestly, so back up. So Becca Lake, shout out to Becca, love her. She's on vacation. Wow, we love you. Um she was adamant that we meet and and I was just kind of like, okay, like what, you keep bringing this up. She mentioned Sarah Sparks a couple of times to me when we were talking about things. Anyways, going to a, a networking event, I really, because I feel all the feels, getting in a room, especially a room full of women at like 7.30 in the morning is overwhelming for me. And I'm not an introverted person. I'm very outgoing. That's just not my time of day. And that's just not really my ideal environment for someone like me. So anyways, I was like, okay, I'm going to this. And I didn't know why. I really did not want to go. Like, I just wanted to stay in bed that day. And so I went and Becca sees me and she's like, Sarah's here. Come with me. And like kind of ushers me over to the Sarah Sparks, right? And anyway, <laughs> you're like, let's grab coffee. I'm like, yeah, sure. And I'm like, I don't know why I feel compelled to even talk to this woman. But I'm just going to roll with it because at this point in time, I mean, I knew that I had some intuitive abilities, but I don't really like know fully what those looked like. Right. So anyways, I was just sort of that thing where I believe, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And so I'm like, well, I'm just going to go with this because it feels wrong to not go with this. So, you know, I've always been taught what, you know, what feels light is right, usually. Yeah. So, yeah, so I didn't go into it going, I want Sarah to tell me what my chosen path was. I just knew that I was living in a constant state of anxiety and in and out of depression, um, confusion, second guessing, self-doubt. I mean, I was wondering, you know, business was, was good, but it just didn't feel right. So I was starting to do the game of like, well, maybe I need to go in a different direction. Maybe this isn't for me. I dreaded the thought of going back to like a corporate job because I had left to do my business full time after five years in a corporate setting that just did not serve me well. So I didn't go into it going, Sarah, I need you to channel my chosen path. I think it was sort of like, let's sort out why I'm feeling this way and get down to the crux of it. And then the chosen path thing sort of, I think, and from my perspective anyways, and you receive information differently. So for maybe for you, you knew all along, but you just need to let me like come to it. <laughs> yeah, yes and no. Um, I, I honestly, I can't remember when we met. I know it was like cool, like colder. Cool. Weather. Another reason why I didn't want to go to that. Right after Valentine's Day, because I remember you, we were talking about your little Valentine's Day freebie that you gave. It's, it was like a date night Valentine's Day. Oh, mm -hmm. so it must have been like February-ish. Yeah. And I remember walking through the yeah. parking lot to that we networking. We together. I feel like I signed up officially for the program in March. So February that probably was about right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when I finally did channel your chosen path, if I feel like it was several, like maybe May or so, because I remember being on vacation in Kentucky yeah. and I was like, what spirit, what are we supposed to talk to talk about today? And so it's like, 
well, it's time to tell her her chosen path. And I was like, oh, goodness. <laughs> the day is the day. Yeah. Um, so when you when yeah. you did, what was your first reaction? It was so funny. I was anticipating your question. It's oh. like, here's this spidey sense coming in. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think at first, it's so funny looking back. Because at first I'm just like, oh, I don't know if I can swear, but oh crap, right? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? What am I gonna do? And I still have days like that. And I think everybody does, that's business, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that for some reason, I it had in my head, I was so deviated at that moment from what my chosen path was. And it's just some thing out in the future that I'm supposed to be finding that when you're like, so you're like doing your chosen path. I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, like it's so anticlimactic. Like I'm like, <laughs> I hear all about the climax, right? Yeah, I mean, 100%, yes. So, so anyways, I think it was sort of like, but still not just like, so we, so like, I'm just doing it. Okay. It was like, but what do I need to change to make sure that I'm actually doing it? And you're like, well, and you remind me of this all the time. Like you are your chosen path. You are living your chosen path every every day. So just keep doing that and it's your chosen path. And so, but you know, and I and I do, and you were kind of saying like in foresight, you spirit was saying it's gonna be this or this kind of project or this and whatever. And I still think that those are to come. And I think that when those things, you know, you're talking about you know, speaking on my experiences and um, even maybe some coaching or writing and things like that. I felt like, oh God, I got to start doing all this stuff right now in order to be living on my chosen path. But as we know, here we are um, a year and months later that I'm doing, I would say, you know, honestly with coronavirus, I'm getting a lot of like people like you asking me to just, we just talk about what you do well, now that we know what I do is my chosen path, I'm getting people asking me to speak on my chosen path, whether they realize that's what they're asking me to do or not. So, um, you know, so maybe that that's where the speaking thing has come in. And, you know, I, I, I've been approached years ago for doing a podcast and I'm like, I don't listen to podcasts. I don't even know what that means. Now I listen to podcasts. So like, I get it. So I don't know, you know, things like that might come up, but um, to answer your question, you know, I'm Wendy. To answer your question, it's, <laughs> It was the initial shock. And now in hindsight, I'm like, I don't know why I was so shocked because it really, truly, like, it's maybe just having more of my poop in a group than what I did then. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, yeah. Cool. yeah. but I, I made it so much lighter afterwards, too. It's the clarity that people are searching for that <laughs> is provided through spirit. Mm -hmm. And if I recall, you know, you feeling all the feels and I hope that's okay for me to share this. I didn't yeah. get your permission, but oh. I want to I be like real because that's I like, what, <clears throat> when I, when I tell people uh, and you said it, like you are your chosen path going back a little bit. And when you were younger, you were like <laughs> scrutinized and like told not to feel all the feels and right. you're too emotional and all the right. things. And and then you're like, well, then trying to navigate, I do have these emotions. Should I not be having these emotions? And then to be told, but that was all for a purpose. Like, right. like to then accept the past and then heal that mm -hmm. and then be like, okay, like now it, it's okay for me to be me. It's okay mm -hmm. for me to feel like it's actually beneficial to others. It's a beneficial to me. It's a beneficial to my relationship. Like mm -hmm. it's okay to feel things in that, you know, like um, I think when we know our chosen path for, for, for myself, when spirit told me that I'm speaking to the masses, the guided message on pure love, there was so much like, speaking to the masses, I was like, no effing way am I going to like speak to a large crowd group of people. Right. And then um, guided message, I was like, you mean to tell me you're going to be talking and speaking through me? Like, that's weird. Like, I don't think so. And then pure love, I was like, I don't even know what that means. I, there's just conditional love. I don't even know what this pure love. I was like, nope. Mm -mm. And then I find out that I am pure love. That is my soul. Like, 
we are our chosen path and that's what that means. I just, I wanted to clarify that for people who are new and like, cause I do say that a lot um, is like, you are your chosen path, but I don't think people who are new to the group may be like, what the heck is she talking about? Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, I could see that. And I'm glad you brought that up because when I was getting ready, Spirit was like, okay, you're gonna, you gotta talk about this and you gotta talk about this, you gotta talk about this. Because these are the relatable things because, you know, I, you're talking about my upbringing, you know, I had a very abusive alcoholic mother. Um, and as a woman, you know, when your mom is that way, it really throws off kind of your, you know, view of what that love looks like, right? The person who physically bore you into this world does not treat you the way that you should be treated. And so looking back, you know, growing up, it was always sort of always waiting for the other shoe to drop, the other bad thing, the next bad thing in the series of unfortunate events to, to happen. And um, looking back, the reconciliation of like, I got, I mean, I, you know, childhood wasn't always awful. You know, there were definitely good moments because my mom was in and out of sobriety. And it was like, when it was real good, it was good. And when it was bad, it was real bad. So I experienced this whole breadth of emotions just from that. And then you know, had, um, you know, and then you choose when you grow up that way, you choose really dysfunctional, chaotic relationships, romantic friends. I've had really dysfunctional bosses. I mean, all kinds of these different relationships. And, and I always thought, well, what's wrong with me that I'm like almost manifesting all this chaos into my life. But really now in hindsight, it was like, I couldn't have done anything differently they were put into my life, onto my path, so I can feel all these feelings because now I have this whole little, I think of it as like a little box right in here that when someone comes to me and oftentimes I can pick up, you know, people walk into a room, people call me on the phone. I know if it's going to be a sunny day or a rainy day before they even open their mouth because I can feel that energy. And so it pulls out those little feelings and I will get even sometimes, um, and this is newer, really, Sarah, since we've worked together one-on-one, -on -one, is I almost get little flashbacks to those experiences in my life to remind me of like, okay, in that moment, remember how you felt? That's how this person feels. Yeah. So it helps me to be like, okay, this is what the questions are to ask. This is how I felt. This is what helped me. And yeah. so then I can make suggestions. And it's funny that you think being in the sexual health and wellness sector, you're like, well, okay, what is an abusive mom? And your mother have to do with like the person that you're going to bed with at night, right? But feelings are feelings, you know, and it's all energy. So, um, you know, they're all tied together. And your the way you're treated, especially as a kid, affects your perspective and your view on that. So I have a lot of abused, um, there's unfortunately a lot of abused folks out there that come to me um, because there's so many abused people out there in the world that then I have this little extra tool in my toolkit that I can then empathize with and help them to try to release and move forward. One of the things that when I am, and I, and I don't want to take credit for this because I know that you, you like clients who come to me have done a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like just not all on me. Like newbies don't usually come to me very much and I, I, I welcome them, but you, you did a lot of work with other, um, um, mediumship type of or healers, or yeah, I mean, they can call themselves healers because energy is energy it's hard to yeah, yeah. name on a style yeah but one thing that i wanted to point out for those who are listening and can 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 relate to being an empath one thing that leah and you i should just say you i don't need to like talk to everybody <laughs> you, um that, that you have honed in on is now i don't have to take on their emotion I can feel how they're feeling to help them, but I don't, and, and maybe I, maybe you haven't, maybe you're still working through that, but I feel like you have. It's a practice. Overcome. Yeah. Like it's, you it's, have, to, you have to, it's a muscle you have to flex and, and I'm so it's the muscle better than I used to and more often. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I feel. And, but it's more beneficial now to you for you to stay out of that anxiety and depression mm -hmm. for longer periods of time or for, for, right. for always, um, because then you're not taking on all of that emotion mm -hmm. 
you're holding true to how, okay, this is how I am really feeling. And I can identify that this is how they're feeling. Right. And I, I can guide them to where they want to go, but I don't have to go down the ladder to them to help them below and help push them up. I can just right. be like, oh, this is how you're feeling. Here's some questions to help. Right. Is that right. like it? Exactly. And that that in itself takes just as you said, practice. And it it you have done the work to do that. And that's one thing of like owning spirituality and growing and being on your chosen path and becoming your soul. That's all part of it. It's um, because as we are sensitive, I mean, I always got stomach aches and I was always like, what in the world is the stomach ache about? And it's because I was feeling, and it was when, for me, when I feel those stomach aches, um, I would, it would just, I would have it all night and it would be debilitating. Now I'm like, oh, I'm getting this pain. Okay. Someone's around. Oh, someone needs a message. Okay. And now I've got other indicators, mm -hmm. but I, that's just what I noticed in, in you and just what, just what you were saying. I just wanted right. to point that out. And, and that, you know, it's funny because my dad, <clears throat> we have a very good relationship. Um, we're very close. My dad is not a woo woo person. You know, he's supportive. He's sort of on that attitude of like, if this stuff makes you feel better and you're not like addicted to drugs or addicted to alcohol, like it's not hurting anybody. Like do what you, you know, my dad's very non-judgmental that way. And, but I remember, you know, there are moments when I picked up on energy because occasionally I'll pick up on energy. Or I hear information from somebody who's passed or whatever. And I'll like be like, so dad, by the way, this is kind of random, but blah, 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 blah. And he was kind of like, mm, whatever. And then a couple of things happened to him. And now he's like, Oh my God, you're, I mean, like, I get it. Okay. <laughs> I my love dad, it. You know, and my dad doesn't have Facebook, so he'll never see this. So I can say what I'm like. <laughs> he would die if you know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, I believe he has some intuitive abilities himself that he just doesn't understand and sort of suppressed over the years because he has these like moments of clarity and the things he says. And I'm like, whoa, like just crazy. But I remember as a kid, and the reason I brought this up was he would always ask me I something would bad would happen to someone else and I go I feel bad for them dad I feel bad for them I feel so bad for them I would cry you see roadkill on the road I was the kid that ball and cry and whatever and he'd be like oh my god so he'd be like they're just sleeping they're just taking a nap on the road it's okay you know just trying to get me to calm down and now as an adult I can explain to him it's like but dad I felt like I was grieving that roadkill like that you know and so then to have a, an adult go don't cry. That's not okay. You just minimize like kind of poo poo your feelings as a little kid. Then you're sort of trained to like shove it down. Don't feel it. So anyways, when I have a hard time letting go and, you know, I do deal with some heavy topics pretty regularly, I would say, um, you know, there are days where sometimes it's like, God, I'll wake up and I'm like, I feel hungover is how I feel. So like on those days when I know that I need to release something, usually that's not mine, or I notice it um, as I'm leveling up. Becca Lake and I always talk about leveling up. So right around moon cycles or like you're making decisions and like, you know, I've had falling out with friends that just don't align with each other anymore, whatever. And it's like that kind of that weird heartache, the growing, it's like a spiritual growing pain, right? And I get that feeling where I feel like heavy and headachey and tired and, I'm not hungry, but I know I need to eat. I'm just restless and weird. And it feels to me like a hangover or slightly depressed, right? So I was living in that state for years. And then once I identified it, and I still have my days where I do that, but it's easier to like snap out of it because I go, this is what you taught me. These are not my feelings. You know, thank you for this information. These do not belong to me. Return to sender with love. And I can do that. And sometimes I have to do it a few times. Sometimes I got to like go like walk around the house, like get some energy moving or whatever. But usually if I can do that, then I can kind of shake myself free of it. So um, I don't remember what the question, why I got started on that team. No, you're all good. Yeah, no, that's perfect segment too. I was like looking through questions that I was yeah. wanting to ask you. And I was like, I think we've covered them. I don't know. Yeah. What are your... that They just want it. And you kind of brought this up. It's, it's that, you know, oftentimes I think when I've seen other, not necessarily you, but when I've seen other folks out there who have programs that are supposed to help you 
work through things, whatever it is, they're like, it's so easy. Like, just do this, follow the steps, whatever. And, um, you know, living your chosen path, I would say it's like, life is still life. Like once you've identified your chosen path and you're on it, like there's still challenges and things you're going to have to face. But I feel like it's more in perspective. And so when you hear people say it's easy, it's like, no, you're still going to go through some crap, but at least you have a healthier perspective on it and tools to make those things easier. And also when you learn to listen to, you know, what you call your divine guidance, um, you know that like, you don't actually have to make the decisions. <laughs> I think that was the secret for me. Like today, I went through the day. I was like, I need to eat. And Spirit's like, you eat this. I'm like, great. Okay. I know I need to get ready. What do I wear for this? And he was, just put this on. Okay. And it takes so much less energy when you just shut up and listen yep. than if you don't. And so Spirit wanted to make sure that I mentioned that. And also that to throw out there that the trusting and allowing piece. So your program is the most challenging. That was two of the most challenging pieces for me being a Capricorn, independent, only child, business owner of 12 years, like to have somebody make decisions for me and to trust that it was the right decision. Because again, I grew up with a mom who really was not great at taking care of me and a dad who was working to support the family. I was a, a, I parented myself, you know, I didn't allow my dad to start parenting me until I was like 20 some years old, <laughs> but it was that I was out of the house and dad, how do I fix this? Dad, how do I do this? Whatever. So anyways, my point is that spirit wanted to make sure that I mentioned that it's still not all kittens, rainbows and sunshine necessarily, but at least you have a healthy perspective of what to move forward with. So yep. I'll shut up now. No, and the trust and allow for people who are um, questioning or oh, I'm wondering about what that means. Um, part of listening to your divine guide or part of living your chosen path is listening to your divine guidance. And um, maybe those who aren't quite ready to live their chosen path, there's an e course that I developed all around um, listening to your divine guidance, which is not something that was going on when Leah was working with me, but I developed it the start of COVID because people um, requesting it and, and were needing it. So I just did it. Um, and part of those five steps is um, trust and allow. And so when, when Leah is sharing or about um, letting others make those decisions, um, what, what you're meaning is spirit um God, the universe making those decisions. It's not right. me making the decisions for you during the no. program. It's like my purpose um, is just to guide you to and along your chosen path and teach you. And I want the confidence and trust in yourself. And I, I, there's questions asked, there's tools, there's guidelines, all to have that confidence and trust in yourself. So that way you, you know, that when you're connecting to, um, spirit, that that's who you're connecting to and setting those intentions and trusting that guidance. And right. Right. And, and I think what you do such a great job of is just allowing the space for folks to really like delve into that and understand it and learn about it because you know when and that's why we were put together was because that's so, some of the things that I needed to learn in order to continue to move forward in my path because I was really stuck and stagnant and I mean not in a great mind space at all um, even though I was you know financially doing well and my business was doing well it's like it still didn't feel good and when you're a business owner that's your life. So like day to day didn't feel good. And that's no way to live. Mm -hmm. um, how are you living your chosen path now? So, I mean, like I said before, just like doing my thing. <laughs> um, what I have found now is just, um, it's sort of opened the floodgates of folks coming to me. I'm finding more um, like deeper conversations. Um, I specialize in in-home parties as one of the pieces to my business where, you know, some call them workshops, whatever you want to call them. Um, and, you know, instead of doing a million of them, it's like I'm doing just a few and they're really impactful when I do them. And that conserves my energy, which because when you start doing this, sometimes it can be very draining, especially if you're not great at flexing that muscle of not holding on to people's feelings. Um, and so what I'm finding is more and more that whether I realize it or not, I'm just offering 
guidance and solutions. And sometimes people really just want their feelings validated. So they come to me and say, I'm feeling some kind of way about my cellulite on my thighs, which, okay, you know, skin is a part of sexual health and wellness, right? Self-care is sex care, sex care is self-care, they work hand in hand. So somebody comes to me and says, Leah, I don't feel good about the cellulite on my thighs. I'm like, girl, I get you. I got the hail damage too. We got some lotion that will help you with it. But it always seems then we start talking about, she starts going into, well, I have the cellulite because I had a baby. It happened after this baby. And this baby has really changed. You know, I might have postpartum or I'm not connected to my body or whatever. And then it's always someone on the line. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I'm just going to keep talking. And I'm just like, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, this is exactly what happens all the time. I can be out in public, meet a woman in the checkout line. This happens all the time. And Grant, my significant other is always like, here we go. Because all the time. <laughs> And you turn around to the lady behind me, even during quarantine with masks on, I turn around to the lady and I'm just like, you know, to the person behind me and they just start talking and they're like, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm telling you this. I just had the worst day and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, okay, well, and I always say, you know, you are loved. Just remember you are loved. Da, 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 da. Sometimes they cry. Sometimes they're like, okay, weirdo. And, but you know that they go home and they're chewing on that. So I'm just trying to do the little things like that. And really my mantra there, or like, day to day, literally and figuratively here, is just about raising vibration, right? We're raising everyone's vibration. Um, and I think we're finding, this is this is where we go into the super woo-woo, but as we move closer to December, when Age of Aquarius starts, you're seeing this 5G energy and people starting to kind of vibrate. That's why you're seeing more people um, diving into self-care. That's why, you know, people argue, well, it's because we've been stuck at home. But why have we been stuck at home? You know, like you start to, you know, like it's all it's all for reasons and it's all part of the bigger spiritual picture. So um, to answer your question, yeah, and just I've, and it's helping me make better decisions, too, of like, does this raise my vibration? Does this raise somebody else's vibration? And if not, then I really think mm, maybe not the thing for me to do. And again, it's the permission to say no thank you to things and to move forward. And so it's allowed me to have better control over calendars and money and um, the people that I work with and whatnot. So awesome. Yes. Anything else that you want to share as we wrap up? I'm like asking spirit, like spirit, what do you got for me? I mean, I guess spirit's just reminding everybody that through, you know, through me, through my work, through what you're doing, through what I could say a lot of people are doing, it's just to remind everybody, you know, you, we're all one in this big ball of energy, right? So we really do have to just take care of each other, practice love and empathy and kindness. And um, remember that when you do see folks out there, especially with, you know, what has been going on with protesting one out lately, like when these people are acting maybe anti-movement, remember that they are, everyone's coming from a place of hurt, right? Um, and so the ones that are the squeakiest wheels are in the most pain. So even though you might not agree with what they're saying or what they're doing, like just do your best to just practice love. And that's really the only way that we're all going to keep raising our vibration together is if we practice that. Yeah, perfect. So awesome. there's your little mojo for the day. Awesome. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Thank um, you so much. Yes. If anybody is interested in uh, finding out what their chosen path is, um, I have, I'm offering a workshop this Saturday um, uh, on channeling your chosen path. And so you can find out more about that. I'll post some information in the group. Um, if, if you want to connect with Leah, how can they connect with you? Um, I mean, we're on Facebook. I'm on all the things, but if you're on Facebook, I'm assuming if you're watching this, you're a Facebook user, feel free to can always private message me. I have a community, um, that's closed community because sometimes we talk about adult topics there. Um, so you can search for that, um, PR by Leah, a V I P one word on Facebook groups. Um, otherwise you can always shoot me a private message and I'm happy to get you an invite to that. Awesome. Well, thank you, love. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, yes, you're welcome. All right. Bye, loves. We'll see you soon.